Ahora ni échale. Das me la. Inside the bubble, yoko bolo, and it go buy two plus bag or baskets. That's it. No one plastic casket. Muchi muchi chaka chaka. Jeko konsa. If this place is basa basa, you feel get cancer. So drop for leaf inside. No take away. Maybe paper or plates. It's straight away. Articulator excavate. Loco chate ko Amanda. One yale Rwanda way. Yo pung a keshona. Fali fali. Throw in the bubble. Fali fali. Polluting our water. Fali fali. Fali fali. Fali fali. Fali fali. Fali fali. Cleanness is not to godliness. Make you clean your environment. Now tell me no one dirtiness. Make you keep Ghana clean. No more pung at the shona. Fali fali, throw in the bola. Fali fali, polluting our water. Fali fali. Um, you're welcome to News Magazine on Kantanka TV. To our viewers in Yoruba land, we say Ekaro. Good morning and welcome to the show. I'm Yoruba Ibrahim and I'm here with. And in Arabic, you would welcome people saying, Marhaban Bekum. Okay, thank you so much. And today is a very uh, refreshing day. It's a Friday, and Occupy Ghana, which is a civil society organization, has declared today Red Friday um, to put a little more pressure on Ghana's parliament to pass the RTI, the Right to Information Bill. And uh, before we go to our trending news, um, Abna. A country like Sweden, way back in 1766, passed something similar to this. And a sister Scandinavian country, Finland, also passed it in 1951. On the African continent, about 24% of all the countries allow rights to information because it engenders transparency and it allows the taxpayer to hold politicians accountable. But in Ghana, this bill, the Rights to Information Bill, was drafted in 1999 and up to now it hasn't been passed it's almost two decades now so what do our politicians have to hide the money you use for projects are monies from the tomato seller in makola there are monies from the carpenter who is working somewhere in anloga so why should it be difficult for you to That's say this is how we are using your money so it looks uh, like we don't have the right to know yes. which is not supposed to be so but we have a responsibility to pay tax yeah. and so we associate uh, with the calls being made by civil society organizations and uh, that the right to information will be passed i think his excellency also made a promise and that under his watch uh, he would see that it was passed um parliament will rise okay. sometime around 24th december so well, let's hope for a miracle mm -hmm. in the next three weeks uh, that the RTI is passed. And what that would do is that it would embolden citizens to ask for accountability. Yeah. You can write to ECG and ask why your light has gone off. Definitely. And ECG would have no option but to furnish you with reasons. If your taps don't flow for three days, you can ask the PURC or the Ghana Water Corporation, uh, GWCL, why your water is not flowing okay. and so that would actually empower citizens and i don't uh, see any reason why the feet dragon should continue since 1999 and so please pass the rti bill into law now 
that is a call. Um, Abina, yeah. what do you have for us by way of trending news? Okay, I'll take you through to our various portals for today um, to see what is trending on authentic portals. Okay, the first one says, um, Food and Drug Authority sets up at Tema Port to fast-track testing of imported foods and drugs. This is for my joy. Yeah, I think we have a lot of, sometimes you see videos of canned food and then when the canned food is tested you'll be shocked maybe as a label or a brand the person may come with something from outside so the labeling the tags and all that may be approved but beyond that people may come up with counterfeit versions yeah. uh, so maybe if you have a photo container a 40 photo container of that product there could be half of that that is not genuine yeah. So you see the label, you see the markings. By the end of the day, what you are consuming might not have been approved by the FDA. So we call for, um, you know, impromptu checkups in various marketplaces, in various supermarkets and all that. And anytime you buy any canned or processed foods, make it a point to check the expiry date. Yeah. It's, very, it's important. very important. So you don't endanger your health and the health of your family. Yeah. And I think, I mean, there had been... Um, a similar issue some time ago that uh, I mean the um, expired food were transferred into cans um, to be re, uh, resealed and yeah. then sold out to uh, public a, a so I think the Food and Drug Board has a lot, a lot to of do. A lot of nasty things are happening on the yeah. food market yeah. and we need to do more as a country to protect the Ghanaian consumer. Definitely. Okay away from that away from that ADB Bank MD receives business growth Achievements Award. That's for my Do you joy believe well. in awards? <laughs> um, many of the <laughs> banks that crashed had been awarded only a year before. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations to the ADB boss. Yeah. And the Agricultural Development Bank is doing well. Yeah. It's not one of the struggling banks. And we congratulate him and his staff yeah. uh, for such a good job done. And then away from that, um, WAGP reverse flow project to be completed in 2019. That's and the West African Gas Portal. Pipeline. The West African Gas Pipeline is very important. Um, and I believe this, is, this goes beyond Ghana. Of course, for the pipeline that runs from Nigeria, and Togo has a stake, Benin has a stake as well. So in terms of maintenance and keeping it in good shape, uh, the value chain, uh, is of utmost importance to every country uh, en route to the Republic of Ghana. So we believe in good maintenance culture uh, so that the, uh, the gas will continue to flow. Definitely. And moving forward, moving forward, 17-year-old abandoned state vehicles set for auction. This is also for my yeah, joy. Yeah, of course. Cars are, vehicles are imported into the country. Some people are not able to pay because there, there is demerage. Uh, if you're not able to clear your goods from the ports after some time. And I hear tariff, you know, fares or fees are very high now. Mm -hmm. So some people may import for less and they have to pay more to clear the goods. So after some time, those vehicles be become government property and they become bonded. When they are bonded, they are auctioned. But when auctioned, maybe the person who brought in the goods in the first place should be, be the first bidder. But that is not what happens. Uh, so you find state parties buying those vehicles at ridiculously cheap prices. So therefore, we call for a little bit of fairness uh, in that regard. But why do you think these vehicles, sh I mean, had, um, the reason these vehicles have been in the state house for this number of years, 17 good years, I mean, that's just... Yeah, there could be other done. reasons. Of course, you need to test the viability of those vehicles, whether they are worthy of being on our roads. Uh, what were the bureaucratic discussions that were taking place? What was the purpose of the import in the first place? Uh, so therefore, the issue of auctioning cars is quite a thorny issue. Mm -hmm. And then issues of fairness and morality come to play. Away from that, Ghana moves up in FDI, inv in FDI investment countries in Africa. Uh, foreign That's direct from investment is good. Ghana is doing well. Okay. Uh, in everybody wants to stable, uh, invest in a very peaceful and stable country. And Ghana has won that accolade. So it's good that we are attracting foreign direct investment. Yeah. And then moving forward, Parliament endorses 
73 billion financial requests from governments. That's also for my joy. Okay, so it's a request. <laughs> <laughs> we hope whatever government wants to do with it will benefit to the yeah. uh, anyway. ordinary Ghanaian. Okay, and uh, moving forward, seven arrested over land guards clash at at Dodua. That's issue, from City News. The issue of land guards is a, a whole new burgeoning industry. People are there who supply weapons. They are middle people between property owners and real estate agents, young people who are used as cannon fodder. It's a whole industry on its own. And I believe we need to prioritize our security you know, needs as a country. So we can't be looking the other side and the other way while this issue continues to fester. And then we need to rechannel the energies of the youth. It's a supply and demand issue. It's a pull push factor. So if the youth are lucratively engaged by the state, they will have no appetite whatsoever to be used. Uh, somebody invests, you know, works for 20 years, 30 years to put up a house, and some people raise the house to the ground, and absolutely nothing happens. Uh, so therefore, we need to tackle the issue because it is causing a lot of pain uh, to many Ghanaians. But Arubad, what do you think is the way forward? Yeah, we need to engage the youth. I, I, I am a youth. I'm not a proponent of using uh, the carrots, up, the stick approach. You need to engage them. Uh, you need to rechannel their energy, so to speak, into other ventures so they will have no interest whatsoever in the Langard, you know, industrial system, however you want to call it. Okay. Moving forward, each, moving forward, yeah. each region to get 20 million after successful referendum referendum than Bochi said this and the referendum is on the 27th of December tentatively uh, so just around the Christmas period and then of course the Supreme Court has thrown out a suit okay. that said if it is the Volta region from which we are calling out OT then the whole of the Volta region should vote if it is the Western region from which we are calling out Western North, the whole of the Western region. If it is the BA, where we have a half for Bono and the rest, and the whole of the, and then also the North, Savannah, Northeast, and all that. But then the Supreme Court says, based on the spirit and letter of our constitution, mm -hmm. it should be carried out, the referendum should be carried out in the areas where people will be affected. And uh, so... It's a bit complicated, but we wait to see how things pan out. But if everything goes on smoothly, Abena, then you need to revise the things you learned in social studies in basic school. Then when they ask you how many regions does this country have, you wouldn't say 10. You would be mentioning 16. But um, the question I ask is, what's the necessity of this No, um, Nigeria has 36, 36 states. Okay. Then the Abuja area is a whole state on its own. So technically, you would say 37. Okay. And this is a country with a population of close to 200 million. We are about one-eighth or one-seventh of that population. And we are hitting 16 you know, regions. Yeah. Even though we are not a federal state, in the case of Nigeria, they have a governor. Gubernatorial elections are held in every state, and the governor has got his own chief of staff, he has got his own executive, and there is a semblance of a, uh, an assembly uh, or a parliament for each state. But in our case, we aren't a federal state. So regions here came to the center, mm -hmm. which is Accra. Uh, so therefore, 16 you know, regions would be a good start. Let's okay. wait and see how things pan out. Okay. Um, the next one says, national security to provide 24-hour civilians on oil pipelines in Atwabo, Amewu reveals this. Yeah, there are, there are reports of sabotage. And some people would just want to blow up a pipeline. Others too would be pirates who would want to stop um, the logistics that are coming to the area just to take a ransom. Uh, so if national security is picking up pieces of intel that we need to do more to fend off any such attacks or acts of sabotage, then I believe it's a call in the right direction. Okay. That's all for our trending news um, for today. I'll take a leave of everybody. You can't afford to miss the rest of the discussion. Please stay with us. Yeah. And I'm Abna Safo. Okay, thank you so much, Abna. You can keep your WhatsApp messages coming. In due course, Abna will be back to read them. Do stick and stay with us. When we come back, we sit with a very vocal and conversational guest. You can't afford to miss the discussion. We'll be back shortly. Oh, 
Mama how any the da chanti any abribia was sorry. Pray as you shall not talk. I hold on and so I am not preoccupied. And kukushi as yet any how be brave any woman. When she any can turn to TV, she should be made of for cry. At today's day, just on some. We just on some do media so you have been there before. Near busa wamo wamo how any woman man here wamo FMU. Na empo se a double bit tie a chair. I would they pray as you shall one da chanti I hold on. And when she shall be near by Ama Adubi, I will can turn to TV. Near for a just on some. A body amuno. Would him say when Uncle Paul, I wore a doma or the doma, my dear. Sir, I tell you, I am near my boy, many panya, or toy when the dad asks it him. And so, and from ya biane ya nua kwaye enhahama ani nru ahodo empo ya mamre ani ya mane ye sa ani man e ya nia man yakopon de ba man bia se de mbeba emuni pa no anya ahoto enti na kantanka television a hihye dwuma die so nko aya to ni din se ye biem e wo ye biem dwuma die so no na ye ko gana me ya nyina ni akwa ko fa ni ma hodo a o yakopon e bia dom ye ani mfaso a ye nya no wo so sa nso ne be hwe ahoban bo so nko e de ba sa ani man Yet to me, I see it at the Ajaho at the Ama in Tima. Some kind of Yama, no, I just said Papa. Yet, you Papa. Made in Ghana, I had you. Yeah, I had you. Yeah, I had you. If you are not making mind with me, fine. But what I'm saying is, me, I'm make late before you. <laughs> oh, who are you listening to me? Who? Oh, me, they listen to me. Ah, everybody, they are not saying me, I'm make late. The headmaster knows I'm make late. School children knows I'm make late. Eh, cupboard boy no. School prefect knows me, I'm make late. Everybody knows I'm make late. Now, me, headmaster, who are you? Me, 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 lateness award. Okay, you welcome back. And today we have in the studios a man who is no stranger uh, to this program, um, an education consultant and former acting director general of Ghana Education Service, Mr. Charles Aheto Chega. Sir, 
Yeah, that's a nice name. Thank you. Uh, Aheto. What does it mean? Oh, that's uh, from the Volta region, actually. Um, you know, uh, I, I found out that Aheto is like Mensa. Okay. Um, but Aheto actually is a name given to a family where you have mostly females, and then suddenly you get a boy. So he's the only boy who's come out. So if you say it is like um, Aheto, Vapam, I mean, like you brought you brought a male to the house. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, so you just dropped, right? Yeah, you dropped as a male out of a How, many, how many female siblings? Oh, no, no, not me. It's my great-grandfather's name. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Good to see you, sir. Yeah, good uh, to see you, It's always refreshing. Yeah. Uh, we are tackling the impact of high school course selection. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's no news that subjects chosen <coughs> by students in secondary schools uh, can be major determinants for their future education career in the labor market. And consequently, the pattern, the curricula, and all that are mm. all very important. Mm. Uh, generally, can you tell us what your views are of high school education? And that is lumping JHS with SHS. Well, um, thank you very much. I, I would not even want to lump JHS with SHS. Yes, sir. Uh, because again, by the structure, these are two very different but closely related uh, streams. Um, so high school, um, in this real sense, uh, is junior and senior. The junior has a different structure, and the senior also has a different structure. So at the junior level, it's a preparatory stage towards doing a senior program. So the levels of specialization in terms of curriculum content uh, tends to be deeper than what others even within the basic level like class six people will be doing yes. um, and the whole pattern of uh, education is structured to be very incremental so from class six you do and if you enter into junior high school you do things that are of a higher level than everything that you did but are very very still related to some of the things that you did in um, at the primary level. Now you take that whole process and you march into the secondary school. Now at the secondary school then you have um, the levels of specialization in terms of the different categorization of subjects. First it begins with the programs. So you have the general uh, program which consists of the science and the arts. Then you have the technical programs. Then you have the vocational programs. Then you have the um, the vocational programs which includes um, arts, arts, visual arts um, programs. Okay. So once you get into that stream, you make specific choices in terms of what you want to, you want to do. Now, okay, please, please. Turn. Now, in, in each of these programs, there are specific um, subjects that um, are identified under each of them. So again, in the sciences, you have your physics, chemistry, biology, and a whole lot of related items. In the arts, you have the general arts programs, and, and then you have, um, when you come to the technical, you have the, um, the trade side, building construction. Now here it's got a new name. BDT. Wood, wood, wood technology. <laughs> wood technology. Wood technology. <laughs> um, then you have the um, mechanics, you have the auto, you do all of that at the, at the SS. And then you come to the um, vocational programs where you have your home economics, general knowledge in arts, uh, visual arts, which also has other small segments and that you have sculpture, you have graphic design. You know, so everywhere you choose, there are others, you, know, you go into some level of detail in terms of um, the kind of specialization that you want to pursue. Uh, don't you think people <coughs> go into course selection without really knowing what they are up against. Well, the little boy is a shark, he's precocious, or the girl is precocious, then you are becoming this automatically by default. Don't you think we choose subjects at both levels, JHS and SHS, without really knowing what goes to the meat of that selection? Yeah, interestingly enough, at the JHS, we don't choose subjects. At JHS, we continue with a set of subjects that are already defined, predefined. Okay. Uh, but it's only at the senior high school that you really choose your subjects. Yes, sir. And you're right. Yeah, uh, we've had some concerns about that. Um, and uh, what has informed the choice of subjects and how and why people choose subjects 
uh, uh, also is based on the cognitive abilities of the child. Mm. So normally, if you get a child who is very good uh, and demonstrates a lot of competency in the various subjects, uh, science, mathematics, uh, and uh, who is very all-round, that child often is built to do a science program. Unless the child says, I don't want to do science, and we want to do something else. But by default, you know, the very brilliant children are put into the, uh, the general program for that matter. So you, if you are good in the arts and you demonstrate a lot of knowledge and, and you are, your math maybe is not very strong, but your English is very good and your other performance in the other areas which drift to knowledge in English is good, then you are built for the arts. So often that is a, a, a guided but unguided uh, thinking that a lot of teachers begin to use to help people to make choices, albeit during the last stages of beginning to make a choice. So you're right. The challenge is that these choices should have come into being right from the time that a child enters. If we want to be very good at it, right from the time that you enter GHS-1. GHS-1, we, we should get a sense of the direction that you want to go into and begin to appreciate where your drifts and your highs and lows are so we are able to get a better understanding and of what you, you do. You, ca you can join the conversation by sending us your WhatsApp messages on 0558 uh, 656899, 0558 656899. We'll soon delve into stakeholder consultation or involvement. But the choice for us to return 19 or 20, our parents determined uh, academic trajectory. Yeah. Some people will tell you what to do, yeah. whether you should even go to the boarding house or you should be a day student. Yeah. Uh, so what should be the kind of uh, um, rapport between teachers on one hand and parents in the choice of the subject uh, award pursues? Right, I'm happy you're talking about parents. We have different categories of parents in you know, uh, of the wards that are in our schools. Uh, so the best, the best, best practice would have been to get parents to be seriously involved in the career choices or even course choices for their children. But that is an ideal situation. We don't have it. Uh, we have a lot of children who take decisions for themselves. Their parents will not even come, even on invitation. So the child is left alone. So a lot of the uh, the challenge is left uh, for the teachers to to decide. Now. Um, let me take in the, let's say, in the best case situation where you have a parent who is really interested. What the teachers do is that we invite the parents to come in to give them a certain understanding of, uh, well, we are, we are in the third year, we are going to choose subjects. Um, your child, this is his performance or her performance. Um, think about how, what you want the child to do. Um, so that process begins with getting parents to, to, make, to make the choices. And as usual, you know, the way we perceive future occupations and what I want to be in the future. So uh, you may not really be good, but your, your dad wants you to become a doctor, so he, he imposes uh, science on you, and he insists that you do the science. The teacher may know that you are not capable of doing it, but your dad says you should do science, so you do the science. Your dad says you should do business, so you do the business. Your dad says you should do arts, so you do arts. Um, you want to do visual arts, but your dad says, no, you won't do visual arts. You want to do home economics, your dad says you won't do home economics, go and do arts. Then you go there and you sit down. So parents have a huge role in terms of this, and it's all based on uh, some of the expectations that many parents have for their, for their children. For us, that is a big problem. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that for us as teachers, it's a big problem. And uh, we are looking at ways to try and see how we can resolve this kind of situation. Um, at that elementary level, it still remains elementary, looking yes. at how high education at the tertiary yeah. level is. Yeah. Would you recommend an office for a career counselor in every JHS and SHS? Excellent. That has been one of the things that over time we have apparently overlooked, but we are trying hard to literally cycle into, into the system, which simply goes down to strengthening the guidance and counseling processes. Um, we, we try to position 
uh, guidance and counseling along the lines of subject choices and career options from JHS2. To say that from JHS2, begin a process of counseling for every child in the school and open opportunities where children can be counseled around some of their dreams and aspirations so that they begin to make informed choices. And note here, we are doing it with only the children, not with the parents. Mm. But again, um, the parents have the ultimate say. And as I said, except in cases where, you know, for some parents... So what if the give session is a joint session? The father or mother comes with the child, then the teacher will, from a very informed position, do an analysis of what the capabilities of yeah. the child are yeah. and what he would recommend. Yes. Would that work? Because that, that works. at 14 or 15, yeah. a child doesn't know his left yeah. from his yeah. right anyway. That really works. And I say that is in very um, uh, exceptional cases okay. where you have some parents who are themselves informed who, who come to the school and now uh, and form part of the whole counseling okay. process okay. but in many instances um, a lot of the parents don't don't avail themselves to that opportunity to get involved in the um in the discussion and that creates the problem uh, for us so we do it generally as a guidance and counseling session and um, ensure that the children okay. get what they want okay we are still in the studios with charles aheto chega an education consultant and former acting director general of GES. Uh, keep your messages coming via WhatsApp on 0558-656899. We'll go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll open the phone lines for you to interact with our guests. Do stick and stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Dear Ba, can't take our automobile showroom. No, she said, Dear, you're the brummer won't cry. The two biominia, now he's an edda form say boko. Same beer, oh, better. You book any moon, what's the affair? Near my wife, the trafio, a fimua, not the tia de cahon. And dear beum cry now, she said, What if you didn't be no? Can't take out three year warranty. Yes, sir, register if you didn't know. Maybe I will be a dear bro, a brian jeshe. I didn't crab beum now, she said, Minia. So what you say you're trying to acquire? You're watching water. FBM Bank in Chemupe. Can't take a shay. Ain't no beer shay. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, you welcome back. You may now join the conversation. Uh, you can call us on phone on 0558-656899, uh, 0558-656899. Uh, sir, you, may, you were making a point on career choices, career guidance, and course selection. Uh, I would want to ask you this. Have you compared a uh, situation with um, international best practices? At what point do you decide that, well, this child has got a knack for this and therefore he or she will pursue this line of course? Well, again, um, under normal circumstances, if you look at the kind of education we provide at the, let's, let me start with the basic level. At the basic level, we have um, essentially um, four goals. Four, the four goals are to make you numerate, literate, and to provide you with life skills, and then give you some basic knowledge in science. Now, that is not enough to define the, your future career choice. Um, over time, um, it has become, we have not moved away from that practice, but over time, uh, a lot of people come from homes with uh, a predefined agenda and interests. Now, that creates a lot of problems for the school situation and also accounts for uh, some kind of uh, uh, an attempt to literally induce the child to fit a certain pattern. You know. Okay, sorry, so I'll be cutting in intermittently. Yeah. We have okay. a caller. Your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Jonathan. My name is Jonathan. I'm calling from my 
Okay. I wanted to ask uh, my my daughter that uh, my teacher is uh, uh, how uh, this thing is going to be uh, about the the different shade of of the uh, hello Jonathan Jonathan hello uh, the tree on? Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't worry at all. We are here for uh, you. Okay. What's it, Miss Sunny Dane? Hello. Yeah, Jonathan. Uh, Hello, Joe. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the line. Uh, me say, me pacho uti tri ya bisa wase misano ewo tri kasebo. Munti na ewa. Ah, okay. Me pacho seno osi school no school no sena. Uh -huh. And I me person I said, me we are we 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 Sooner, eh, because we may call at least technical certainty. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, 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 he had technical education, so he's at six, six, and sevens as to what course the child should pursue. Okay. Any advice for him? Yeah. So what I would advise Joe is that, again, um, he has to um, get in touch with the teachers of the school and get a sense of the child's No, but free SHS, but there's still computer no, placement or no computer placement. Um, again, there is some computer placement. Mm. But I think he's talking about, it's not that the child is, I, if I understood him, uh, he's talking about a child getting registered to go into SS. So I presume the child is now in JHS. Okay. Now, so I, I understood him from that point. So okay. he doesn't know how, the, uh, what choice that the child should have. Okay. Now, if I understand him to say that, so my suggestion, my, my, my advice to him is that he should get in touch with the child's school, get in touch with the teachers of the school, get a sense of his, his, his daughter's performance. Um, and then, you know, let the teachers guide in terms of what the child can do. And remember, SHS also includes technical. So the daughter could also go to Kanishi Secondary Technical School and run and do the same course that he did in terms of, I don't know, I think he said he did electrical or something. Yes, he said metal. Metal. metal huh? And do the same metal. For all you know, he did metal. He doesn't want the child to do metal. He also knows the daughter look at where the daughter's interest is and contribute to that discussion about what the daughter can do in the future that is what we want to see in our schools mm. you know other than people having a dream course and say that i want my child i also want my child to be a doctor and then your child is not able to perform to that level even at this starting point and you are you are insisting that the child should do should become a doctor go and do science and all of that and that creates a lot of problems also for the children but this is the time that we want the parents to also listen to children's choices Students' preferences and see how the academic performance in school can help to bring a balance and, and for us to properly place uh, the child. We, we spoke um, two days ago with a uh, curriculum developer, yes. <clears throat> and there was consensus yeah. here and from wherever he was speaking that uh, the kind of curricula we use are a cake. Uh, go to a physics laboratory, you see things you would see in Shakespearean movies. Who uses a simple pendulum today? Uh, so. You sat on top of decision making. Yeah. And where do we stand in terms of, okay, the choices are good for courses, course selection, but then beyond the choices, how do we provide the logistics uh, for us to get the best from the students? You know, again, that, that, that goes into the costs of education. Anything that is additional to what the teachers do is a cost matter, is an input issue. Um, you talked about who uses a simple pendulum. What is the alternative? The alternative is something else. I'm not a science person, so it's something else other than a pendulum that has to be bought. 
And where would the money come from? In public schools, government will have to provide that money. Now, if government doesn't provide that money, it cannot be bought. Mm. Some, in some areas, what they do is that, oh, government is not able to provide that money. So what do you do? You go back to parents and say, look, contribute and let's buy this. It's not every parent who will be able to get the money. Or they may not even want to even provide at all. Again, that is the level where we are talking about poverty. So the challenge is there. It is the financing and the resourcing of schools, which in the public system is the responsibility of government. Now, move away from public system and go into private schools. Now, go into all the current private schools in Ghana. You'll find that because parents are paying in their thousands, go to their labs and you'll see what you have never seen before. Because people are paying. They are paying the cost for their children's education. Sharply in contrast to what government does. So education is about resource, resources. And if government wants to ensure that beyond the teaching, the talk, and the chalking, and the, the white marking on the boards, it, there is more to it than, than, than all of that. There is the need for you to provide the resources and the materials that will further enhance the child's learning. And that, is, that certainly goes beyond the teacher. Um, Saito schools are underprivileged schools. So how do we carry Saito schools along so that we get them the threshold? That will be needed. If you want to do science, you need to come out clean yeah. as somebody who has gone through the needed training. Yeah. Of course, government doesn't have the wherewithal yeah. uh, to make laboratories state of the art. Yeah. What would you recommend that we do as a nation? You know, we are coming back to the same argument we've had, again, also dealing with the free SHS issue. Um, clearly, um, I, I believe that we have misunderstood the intentions of parents. I can say without any fear of contradiction that a majority of the parents want to contribute. They want to put some money down uh, for the education of their, of their children, and they'll do it gladly. Um, so again, if we can allow parents to make the contribution they want to make, no matter how small, that could, in, in, the, in our public schools, build a certain resource to use to, to help the children. In the absence of that, a lot of the pressure is now on the teachers. So in the public schools, teachers do a lot of work to try and get the children to come in and I mean to get to the point where they can be prepared uh, to maybe pursue the kind of careers that they want to pursue. Um, again, there are so many odds here and there are so many things that go against the teacher. The child's own uh, home environment, how much time the child has to be able to spend time to learn outside the school setting. Teachers try to do it by doing extra classes but again, that is not enough to help the children to get to that, that level. It's a whole cycle of consistent and continuous support for children, you know, to be able to get through all of this. And th that is an interplay between parents and then the teachers and in the then, schools. And then comes, uh, Mr. Chega, the issue of policy vacillations. Yeah. This government comes and says, I even fear that if there is change of government, which will happen anyway, whether it happens in the next two years or next 20 years is going to happen. Can't we build consensus that in the education sector, instead of maybe the three years we were doing, we're going to revert to four? And why do a U-turn and go back to the uh, initial you know, time? Uh, can't we build consensus around free SHS so that we give it some longevity? If not, someone else comes into power and we go back to square one. Great idea. We can build that consensus, but that would depend on how the politicians want that consensus to be built. Now, for issues around education, um, like trees growing, it has to gestate. You need a long time to be able to arrive at a certain decision. And um, a lot of people would have to make a lot of talk. I think what we have missed in our educational development in this country is the stakeholder involvement and the and, and providing a long um, a, a longitudinal discussion around the issues that we want to introduce into education. We've never had it. We suddenly stopped common entrance and we introduced BEC. Then within that same frame, we also stopped the middle school leaving certificate. And then we had BEC. If you go into the literature of the BEC, the protagonists of the idea say that it is a fusion of common entrance and middle school leaving certificate. So um, that was foisted on us and we accepted it. Um, we didn't all accept it, 
Um, there was serious debate about oh, why. So, sorry, when you are charged up like this, I don't want to interrupt. Uh, hello, your name and where you calling from? Hello, your name. Hello, I'm Paula. calling from Accra. Okay, welcome to the show. Yeah. What's on your mind, bro? And speak up a bit. Uh, the whole, yeah. Uh, the whole, the, the whole, whole thing about uh, education in this country. And put off and lower the, the volume on your TV set. You can actually uh, put the, it off and the we'll still... the, the, the politicians will not help us because they always bring their politics in education. That will not help because it's all about campaign promises, trying to win power for another four years. Hmm. So why wouldn't they allow those who knows better about education to roll out the policies? So the government will only finance it. Because the daily darling they are doing with the application will not help issues. It started with rollers from commentary to uh, the GFS team and they failed to finance it. You see, it's too political. So are they trying to drive the interest of education to the private sector? Because the, the, the same people are building secondary schools on the private way. So it will end up the way the, the primary schools end up with the, with the private system. We'll be paying huge for our children. What is going on in this country? Are we serious? We'll help Ghana. Okay, thank you so much, right, Kola. And uh, thank you so much. I'm quite passionate about your views. We appreciate your time. Uh, so the same issues. And um, uh, is it possible to decouple politics from education? If you ask me, I'll say yes, it's possible. I mean, you must have, um, because I've, I've worked in the Ministry of Education uh, with a number of ministers. And I've worked with ministers who are very political in their outlook. And I've worked with ministers who, are, um, who have a, an understanding of the public administration system and who use the public administration to drive their, their tenure of office. So there are variations. There are the very political ones and those who say, look, uh, this is a public system. There are processes that we have to follow. You know, how do we, I get that so that I can now, as minister, to pretend over a process okay, that... Sorry about that, sir. Yeah. Hello. Your name and where are you calling us from? Okay, Sedo, welcome to the show, Sedo. Okay, please do, Sedo. Akwaba. Okay. Yeah. And please, and Mepacho, over to me, a doom with TV, don't put a better one. You, you, and I know almost a local day. You, hello, okay, Mepacho, what do you TV in one? I'm uh, Don't worry, you're a man at the mouth. Uh huh. Me pacho can you walk with him? Aye. Me pacho, me pano ya secondary school ewa kupelewa. Aye. Aye. Into arusu ewa ko day na ewa ko. Okay. Wanya body. Hmm. Into ebra ewa ya no skala yet yeti da da ya beji atu ya kano kula no ewa wa samu kula ya dia ma. Yo. So into kwa ewa mobi ya beji we transfer dia ba kumasi amaya na. Okay. okay, me pacho wase misa e kle na ye obema umwaye inti kwa suwa neshe. This is a complication that seems to reverberate uh, throughout the country. I don't see how a child can trek from Kumasi to Koforidi as a day student. Not even a sub, you know, metro will help you. Uh, so in a situation like this, how do we correct the wrong? Yeah, again, this situation, I would dare say that was created by the administrative system and the whole um, desire to try and just 
fail secondary schools. Mm. Um, there were a lot of schools that were created in the course of expanding the secondary schools, and these were located in a number of districts and were designed to be day schools. And again, the emphasis is day schools. We already had secondary schools, but the challenge was that it, it became clear that so many people could not go into the boarding school, also because of all these money issues. And, and because they didn't have a place to go to school, they won't go to school at all. And they went. So they built these schools in, in all of these areas. But the part of the problem also comes back to us as Ghanaians where uh, we have a huge preference for boarding schools. And then we created all these um, standard-based, elevated processes and a whole range of, of things. But the reason I say it was done by the system was that initially, selection into schools was done by headmasters. And a lot of accusations came that headmasters were being selective, they were all the things that come with the selection process. So the decision was that we should go um, we should remove the human factor and, and go computerize and, and computerize the system. Now, we did a computerization, and what came out of it was that we decided to put children from Kumasi into a school in the Volta region, which is a day school. Mm. We take people from Bolga and bring them down to a school in Western region, which is a day school. I think we didn't give a lot of thought to that, and we didn't even attempt to remediate that process to ensure that we set up a system and we have continued with that over time. That also gave birth to that whole process where day schools now became day school hostel. Because, I mean, the students had come, uh, there was no place to keep the students in the school because it's a day school, and people needed a place to stay. They wanted to go to school, they needed a place to stay. So then the hostel idea came in and eventually started to overtake the whole process. And then the gradual trans, uh, transformation of day schools now into boarding schools. If we had gone ahead and posted people to schools in their localities. Now, I come from Otuam, and I chose, I, I, I choose a school where I don't get a place. The last option should be Otuam. You will go to school in Otuam. I remember my days as a, a headmaster, you know, um, in, a, in a part of the, of the country where um, the school was a day school, and in that community too were, were two schools, both of them had boarding facilities. So the challenge was that people would prefer to go to boarding houses, so they choose the boarding house. So I said, look, uh, this school is for this area. If you are in this area and you don't choose this school, you cannot come here even if you get the best grade. So then people realized that, hey, if I go around and the best schools, then the, with my best grades don't take me, then I have nowhere to go. But then I'm coming back to the community where there is a school. So I said, fine, I don't care whether you choose this school, first choice, second choice, or third choice. Anyway, I just want to see in your list a school, you know, the name of the school as one of your choices. Then you will come. Then it means that when they put you here, you will go to school. But if you don't choose it, it means you don't want the school. You cannot come here as a last resort. And I tell you, we increase the population in the school. With people from the community, we realize that, ah, well, then we need to go to school in our community. So those are the kinds of things. And today, the school has now also assumed the boarding status. They've also built boarding facilities for them. I don't have any problem with that. But we are getting back. We have a problem. We don't fix it. And then we worsen it. And then we go and do things that create the same challenge that we need to address. And that has been partly the problem with our, the way we manage our education system. Uh, Charles Ahito Chega. Um, uh, Abena, welcome back. Uh, Abena, what do you have for us by way of messages? Okay, we have received excellent contributions. A very good morning to your cherished viewers. I am in love with the show. This is real reflection of matured journalism. I love your style of the profession. You have your way out. Sami Alote sent in this one from Kede. I feel parents should be taken through course selection orientations at PTAS. That's PTAS meeting. So they so they can understand their children very well to avoid cause imposition on the awards. Bismarck from Enzema sent in this one. I appreciate the concept of the show. Good job, Kansanka TV. NS from Canada sent in this one. Kweku from Councilment. I plead that parents should, should not just impose courses on the awards, but rather communicate with their preschool and basic school teachers to really know the, the strengths of the world to help their career. 
Okay, no name. I am also, please um, do your best to add your name. I am also sad when, when I see children in public schools because they do not enjoy any luxury of education compared to the private schools. Nanama from Medina, same thing this one. Alice from Takradi, nice show, nice team on set. Good job, Kantanka TV. I think government should interfere in our education system because it really re retarding. It's really retarding growth at the sector set from Sunyane, sending this one. Adams from Tunu, please, I want to find out uh, how Abina, far... Abina, sorry, you are charged up. Sorry about that. Um, there is a caller. Maybe you'll be our last caller. Hello, thank you so much for making time. Hello, thank you too. Uh, brother, I want to uh, contribute to your program. Please do. Hello. Yeah, please do. Okay. Uh, Charles is my headmaster at Boku Tech Tech. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> so okay. I want to greet my headmaster. Okay, okay. Uh, this is one of his students. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm very inspired with what he says. If only we can follow it, it will help us very much. Uh, this program, must, you, you people must organize another program for it. Oh, uh, about you to what you are doing, you are helping Ghana, uh, Mother Ghana. Okay. So we need people like you people so that we will edu we'll educate the public so that they will do much for Ghana to move forward. Okay. So Charles, this is one of your first second bags at Sectech. Oh, okay. Focus okay. okay. Uh, I'm calling Charlie to say to Azuma if you can remind, uh, remember. Uh, your your this assistant headmaster, uh -huh. uh, Charles. Yes. That is one of his small brother. Ah. Uh, so as I see, I'm very happy to be on uh, this program. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so <laughs> much, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, to all our viewers, your thoughts are very important to us. And we are also always excited when you call onto the show. Sir, very fond memories, I suppose. <laughs> but I hope he was a good student. <laughs> okay, Abina, you can take us home. Yeah. Okay. Please, I want to find out how far with the community day school issues raised by our politicians. Um, this is Adams from Tumu. Sent, okay, sent in this one. Watching live from Tema General Hospital, Esther Safo sent in this one. That's how we end our... Um, social media comments um, for today and to remind you we appreciate all your comments keep them coming because we can't build Ghana and our education system to be precise alone and so keep your comments coming anytime anytime I mean we're on this show thank you okay. so much and that is Abina Safa. Abina thank you so much um, keep interacting uh, Abina is in charge of that uh, yeah. uh, department of the show um, uh, it's time and then we have you are very loquacious man uh, i would want to take your recommendations but if you're able to condense them uh, i'll be very happy yeah well i, I think that um there, there are a lot of things we can do with our education uh, system um generally we, we have a structure that is quite good um we are building our content and um you know through processes that for me have has have, have um, currently is very engaging and inclusive. Um, we are um, trying very hard to restore confidence in the, in the education system. I would propose that um, whatever government wants to do, um, they must listen to a lot of ideas from people, in fact, from sources that uh, it might even not consider to be very important because there are very rich ideas that come from uh, unusual sources and they go a long way to help in improving um, what we do in the education system. So uh, I think that we, we need to sit down, we need to do a, a, a better reflection of our education system and try and address some of the critical challenges that attempt to make it appear that it is not a, a, a fit for purpose uh, system we are running, but I believe that we are doing some very good job in this country to build the human capacity of our children. Okay, one of our viewers is Trinibua Rebecca, 
and Trinawa Boa Rebecca, you are watching us from the Kede area. Uh, you send your greetings to all student nurses. Um, we couldn't have had a better guest, uh, Charles Aheto Chega, an education consultant and former acting director general, Ghana Education Service. Sir, thank you so much for making time. Thank you very much. Uh, till we come having your me. okay, so we come your way on Monday with another edition of News Magazine. Stay blessed and keep watching Kantanka TV. Do have a good day.